I'm Ina Fried with CNET. I'm here in Las Vegas at Microsoft's Mix conference. I'm here with Joe Belfiore, who works with Windows Mobile heavily, and Scott Guthrie, who works in Microsoft's developer division, also um, very involved with Silverlight. Um, obviously, you guys talked about a range of things today, but one of the things that people are most interested in on is the Windows Phone 7 series operating system and kind of everything about it. When are the devices going to be available and, and what can I expect on it? From that perspective, um, you know, most of the attention today was on developers and the fact, as we've said before, that they're going to use Silverlight and XNA. One of the cool demos was um, Netflix playing on the phone. And I'm curious, that seemed to be a good example of what can Windows Phone do that other devices in the market can't do. And I'm curious if there are other things that you would say, what we've unveiled will allow you to do X that you haven't been able to do before on the phone. Sure. Actually, I'll cover some user cool. experience. Sure, cover yeah, some platform. Yeah. Uh, so sort of from a user experience perspective, one of the main ideas that we have in Windows Phone 7 series is to try to do a smart design that anticipates what people want and brings together um, tasks that are similar into integrated experiences we call hubs. So for example, the Netflix app you, you gave as an example integrates right into our music and video hub. And that's something that we don't see other smartphones doing today. You have one place to go. You go to music and video, and whether you're a Zune user who syncs some music and video, a Netflix user that's got a, a watch instantly queue available, a Pandora user, a Last.fm user, all these applications can integrate right into music and video so you have one-stop shopping for whatever service it is you like best. Another example along those lines that we showed was the colorizer application, which lets you modify the pictures that you've taken with the camera on the phone. Third-party applications can integrate right in and become an extension of the Photos Hub that's built into Windows Phone 7 series. So one of the things that we've seen a lot of is this idea that um, we really want applications not to sort of exist generically in one big applications bucket, but kind of what are they doing and where does it make sense on the phone. One of the things that users seem to want is their cake and eating it too in terms of being able to have simple experiences, you know, what do I want to do right now, and being able to do a lot of the things. Can you talk about where multitasking, the ability to do more than one thing at once, what's Microsoft's approach been to that? Yeah, sure. We're, we're trying to make the system really smart about doing multitasking for the things that you want to have multitask, but also not do it when it shouldn't to keep your battery life as long as possible. So, for example, at the heart of the Windows Phone 7 series devices is a modern version of the CE operating system kernel that does full multitasking. We take advantage of that to do things like loading your browser web pages in the background. If you start the browser, start a web page loading and flip back, you can wait a little while and go back and your page will be right there. We play music in the background, we download your email in the background, all these sorts of things. And we're working with our third party developer partners to enable ways for third party applications to also get things done. Although we also plan to suspend third party applications if you're not using them to conserve your battery. So one of the things it seems like Microsoft is doing um, is saying just because we can do something doesn't mean we're going to do it all the time. which. Sounds like a bit of a break. I mean, <laughs> typically at Microsoft, um, things you know tended to get, can we do it? Well, if we can, we're going to do it. Um, and I think that kind of built the reputation that, you know, I don't think people ever said X is underpowered. They just said, it doesn't do anything I want well. You know, when we're talking about earlier uh, versions of Windows Mobile, it seems like that's an experience that you guys are trying to get rid of. Well, I think one of the things that's, that uh, I think people got really today was just sort of just how new Windows Phone 7 is from a user experience perspective and, and how much attention to detail around the user experience and both of the, the built-in shell and the built-in apps, but also what developers are going to be able to do in terms of building experiences and apps on top of that. And, you know, there's just such a great attention to detail, the use of motion, fluidity, um, UI, you know, all hardware accelerated, you know, I think that's that's probably the biggest thing that people are going to notice when they use the experiences. And, you know, I, I think we're, we're making a, a good set of decisions around, you know, how do we balance making sure that that consumer experience is just is just rock solid and, um, you know, really, really appealing. And actually, another example I'd add, um, we've constrained the hardware spec so that there's a predictable bunch of hardware capabilities will be part of every phone. So every you know phone, it's going to have location, you know exactly. it's going to have so uh, exactly. capacitive touch screen. Capacitive touch, there's predictable screen sizes, 
there's uh, GPS, and Scott's team has done an amazing job in, with this constraint to go make sure that the development platform is deep, rich, and really easy for people to use. And that's why I think we saw so many of the apps that his team worked with third parties today to take full advantage of all these capabilities in the phone because it was predictable and well known up front. So I think probably the la last question that's on a lot of people's mind is when am I going to be able to get my hands on it? Obviously today you guys released both developer tools and an emulator. The phones themselves will be on the market by the holiday season. Is there something before then that where developers will be able to get their hands on actual devices? Well, the, what developers have today is everything they need to build apps for the phone. I mean, they literally are getting a Windows Phone 7 series device that runs in emula emulation on their PC. So, you know, tons and tons of people can download that today. It's free. Um, over time, you know, we'll look for opportunities to connect more with those developers and find other ways to make them productive. But today what we're excited about is, is the work that Scott's team has done to empower and light up all the developers out there. The great thing about all the apps that we showed today, we showed Netflix, Foursquare, Shazam, you know, Major League Soccer, um, AP News Reader, you know, a whole bunch more apps, Seismic, a whole bunch more applications. Is, you know, the thing I'm most excited about was you know, our partners were able to take early versions of the tools we shipped today and start about three weeks ago on these apps. And you know, the feedback from everyone here has just been like, oh, they're so stunning, you know, I want to lick them, they're so good. Um, and uh, you know, that, everyone on the web today can download the tools that were used to build those apps. And the emulator's hardware accelerated, supports multi-touch, so the cool thing is everyone can build every one of those apps that we showed on stage today. And you know, we're pretty excited to see what, what comes out of it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.